So a friend of mine sent me a link to an article at the San Francisco Chronicle. And you know how often I'll kind of pull up an article and we'll, we'll work through like the most erroneous parts together and I'll just highlight a couple of different sentences throughout. Well, the trouble with this one is that it's so wrong so much of the time that I don't know what to highlight. So like almost every sentence in this article, it's not just, I mean, it's factually and then also morally wrong. Um, yeah, it's, it's just so bad. Let me just go ahead and pull this thing up. How a kid's playdate in Oakland became a flashpoint for racists. Racists tried to vilify an Oakland elementary school for organizing a playdate specifically for black, Latino, and AAPI families. Their hate only reinforced the importance of creating more of these safe spaces. So in other words, <laughs> they, they used tax money, right? to arrange an event where white kids were excluded and some people and parents got upset about that and those people are therefore racist. Not the people telling white kids that they're not welcome at the event. No, those aren't racist, but the racists are the people who were excluded from an event because of the color of their skin. Just to be clear about what we're, what we're saying here. Like the only way that that is possible is if you entirely redefine what racist is, which is what these people have been trying to do for so long now. Like when I was a kid, it was very obvious. You were racist if you hated people on the basis of the color of their skin. That was it, you know? Um, but now they're trying to redefine racist such that you can only be a racist if you're white. And in fact, if you are white, then you pretty much always are a racist. Because even if you don't think you are, well, you have some, some notions deep within you, or you have some ancestry that proves it, or so on. Or because, because white people have the power in the country, whether they do or not, whether it's imagined or real, you therefore are always a racist. So by redefining these words, they come up with rationalizations for their own acts of immorality. Now, to be clear, if you know, like a black, a black owned business, let's just say, wanted to only serve black people. I actually don't care about that. It's not legal in this country at the moment due to the Civil Rights Act that doesn't allow it. But personally, I would actually get rid of the Civil Rights Act, allow business owners to associate freely with whoever they wish and not associate with whoever they wish. But in this case, this is also involving children, but more importantly, and this is a tax funded, this public event. And so no, you can't use that tax money to exclude white kids and no I mean it's also just grossly immoral to do so but anyway okay let's let's scroll on down through this <sighs> this, this article is so bad the equity and inclusion committee at Oakland's Chabot Elementary School didn't publish the emails and phone numbers of organizers when advertising its playdate for students of color on August 26th why does an elementary school have an equity and inclusion committee, really? Did it, did it really need that? I'm going to go with a straight no. But it says, something told me not to do it, said Brianna, the co-chair of the committee who was black. And then, not to ignore some just random heathen pagan spirituality, maybe it was my ancestors talking to me. Yeah, maybe it was that, or maybe it was the fact that what you knew that what you were doing was wrong. Like... I mean, just to go out on a limb here, maybe the part of you that that told you not to publicize the fact that you were doing something was was that slight pang of conscience. I know, I know, it, it, it's a very novel idea. So novel, in fact, that the author of this crap article actually was, this isn't in quotes, this is the, the actual so-called journalist wrote, those ancestors must have known racism is still thriving in the nation. The Bay Area is no exception. Um, <laughs> in an article about an event that was created to exclude white kids, they have the audacity to try and act like it's white people and their racism that still exists throughout the nation, even in the Bay Area. The racism is in the mirror. You know, look a little harder. I mean, and they're trying to make it as if as if there's some way to separate the fact that you have one colour versus the fact that you're excluding another colour. Like, imagine this. 
if you have if you have a woman there at an elementary school and she was like we're gonna have an all whites event today and it's not that we don't like black people it's just that they're not welcome because this is only a white event <laughs> you, you see what I mean? You see how just utterly ludicrous it is? Like, I'm sorry, but that's not really the way that it works. <laughs> it's just not. Uh, let's keep going, okay? Like I said, this, this whole thing is just wild. Creating spaces for black, brown, and AAPI kids is seen as some kind of zero-sum game for people who are against it. This is a professor of social work, by the way. They ask where the white spaces are which disregards how those spaces exist by default in society. Okay, we've got to talk about this. Where? Like, where, pray tell, are these white spaces that exist by default in society? It's like these people seem like they're locked in some other era that is not now. I mean, there are people of different races that go everywhere. There are no signs that say whites only. And the only signs that say, you know, colored or people of color only are theirs. They're the ones putting up the signs. So they seem to be locked in some kind of error that they're at the same time, rather confusingly, trying to bring back. Because they're trying to bring back a type of segregation, which they claim it's not segregation because, again, they're trying to redefine words. But to segregate is to separate, which is literally what they're doing. There are no white spaces that exist by default in society. Um, it's just not a thing. Um, there's no... There's just no event anywhere now that would say... Okay, only white people can do this. None. That's not the case for other racial groups, because there are, you know, uh, there are instances like this um, where there are lots of different groups specifically for other racial groups. It's not done for white people. It's considered racist the moment that you do it for white people. Yeah, I know, this is one of those things that we're not supposed to say, but it's also true, so I'll say it. Let's continue, okay? I'm going to pull this article back up, and we're going to go just a little bit uh further down here um this idea of painting critical anti-racism efforts as somehow racist or anti-white is a familiar strategy used by some republicans to sway voters and win elections the deliberate distortion of reality paints anti-racism movements as divisive rather than unifying hateful rather than compassionate how do you argue with the logic as backward as this. Like, I actually, I published an article recently about how it's beneficial to actually engage in in debate and learn your arguments better and learn the uh, arguments of your opponents better. But when it's this bad, when the arguments are so out of touch with reality, to, to use one of uh, their expressions, um, it's very difficult to argue. I mean, how can you argue, for example, that having your all non-white space is unifying because that's what they're doing they're literally arguing with a, with a straight face that saying that we're having only people of color to use the modern expression um is is unifying hey get out we're unified <laughs> it just doesn't work. I'm, I'm sorry, but there's, there's something about the, the, the use of language here where they seem to be speaking an entirely different uh, language because they've redefined so many of their words. Um, you can't kick out white kids and say that you're doing so to be compassionate. That's, that's just not the case. It's just an error. And so it's difficult to even come up with uh, how do you argue when they're just not speaking sense. Where it just... Is the opposite of the truth and that's where they are and yeah they're upset they got some hateful messages well yeah that's kind of what's going to happen when you have uh, that kind of a situation and then we're down here it says um within the last two years we've seen incidents like the one at alameda high school where the words whites only and blacks only were scrolled across walls and in a bathroom i mean the majority of the events where you see stuff like that are actually fake hate crimes and it gets found out later that it was, you know, uh, some black kid who wanted attention or whatever. They're, they're recorded, there's a site that actually records them. I'll put it up on screen because I can't remember off the top of my head and I don't want to say that it's wrong. Um, but, okay, so we've got these, we're talking about these signs. Well, 
couldn't you just as easily put that up at their, their event? I mean, their event, which was, you know, it wasn't only blacks, it was every other group except for whites. But you could certainly, you know, put up a people of colour only, since that's the modern inclusive, inclusive except for whites <laughs> um, e expression. Right? I mean, it would absolutely fit. Or just no whites. That would also work. No whites allowed. That would work. It would cover what the event actually uh, included. Again, using taxpayer money to kick out white kids. I mean, that's that's what they're doing. And, and they act like there's some kind of, I don't know, morality to it? That that we're supposed to be impressed at their efforts and, and, and consider the fact that they got any pushback at all as proof that they did something right. So if that's the case, we could start creating all-white events and then any pushback we could use to justify the fact that we needed more all-white events. Because this is the kind of broken logic that they are promoting. Logic doesn't seem to be their thing. Neither does morality, um, since we're on the topic. But this is what's been traveling, uh, especially around the, around the country, really. And it's like, we're in a position where so many don't seem to be able to articulate a position. And I think it's just because their position is immoral, that you can't come up with a rationale uh, to state otherwise, or to get this to fit within the bounds of, of what the current law is with things like the Civil Rights Act. But even more than that, since this is on public, uh, public property, it will always be illegal, I certainly hope so, to just kick out the white kids um, from your event, but that's what we're seeing spread. So to the contrary of the assertion that all white spaces are the default, I think that what you're actually finding, and what's a more honest take, is that the default would be multiracial, but the only other option is specifically no white spaces. That's what we're seeing in modern America today. And I don't think that we can proceed forward as long as we're talking in, in lies, as long as we don't acknowledge what is true. And so many different like cultural commentators won't broach this issue because they don't want to be accused of being racist, as you see here. But at a certain point, you have to realize they have redefined what a racist is so much that it no longer bears any meaning whatsoever because they've redefined everything else, like compassionate and divisive and segregation. And it, it goes on and on. Oh, yeah, and marriage. They did that a while back. So I think I sort of have to reclaim the words and just say what is true and say what is right and proceed from there. Hey, you're still here! Don't forget to give the video a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and share it with your friends. I've also got links in the description as to how you can help support my work. Thank you so much!